What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the weekly live stream from Scalar Learning, all about SAT math. And today we are covering graphing linear equations level three. So let's jump into the problems without further ado. Now, oh, quick, quick announcement, very important. I took the SAT not too long ago, about almost two weeks ago. And the scores are coming back this Friday, which I'm really excited about. What I'm going to be doing to release the score to everybody is I'm going to I'm going to make a big vlog video about my entire process of taking the test the morning of all that good stuff. But I am going to also do a live score reveal on camera on my YouTube channel. I think on Friday, I'm just trying to figure out the exact time right now. So I'll put that up and you guys can see when that is. You guys can tune in and, and check it out. And that'll be kind of fun. I'll talk about I'll show my score. Uh, live as I'm checking it for the first time and then we can kind of talk about everything I went through on the test and, and my thoughts and, and maybe even go through the score report. All right, so without further ado, graphing linear, sorry, what are we doing again? We are doing graphing, yeah, graphing linear equations problems level three. All right, I think this is it. All right, so here we go. We've got the equations below are graphing the xy plane. Which equations, which equations graph will have a slope of 7 eighths? All right. Now, the issue is if this was in slope intercept form, right? If it was like y equals mx plus b, all we'd have to do is look for a slope. That's our slope of 7 eighths, right? And a y intercept of 3, that b value would be 3, and that's the equation. But it's not like that. But what we can see is these equations are all have x and y on the left side. Uh, and there are no fractions. It's actually in standard form. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 7 eighths y, x from both sides and get it over there. So then I have 7, 8, negative 7 eighths x plus y equals 3. Okay, I subtracted this from both sides. And then you notice none of these have fractions and all the x's are positive because that's standard form. So I'm going to multiply everything times negative 8, okay? Boom, boom, and boom. So this becomes 7x, right? Negative 8 times 7 eighths is 7. And it's positive because the negatives cancel out. Minus 8y. And then negative 8 times 3 is negative 24. And there's the answer. So we should see 7x minus 8y equals negative 24. Now, even if we had a, had an issue, if you didn't want to do it this way, you didn't recognize that it was in standard form, you could come, you could go backwards, and you could say that you could take each one of these equations and put them into slope-intercept form. It's just a little longer. All right, next. Hold on, let me zoom in a little bit. Oops. Let's zoom in on this because I think that was better for people. There we go. The equation for the gravitational potential energy of a kilogram object on Earth resting h meters above the ground is blah, blah, blah. U equals 9.8 h. Which of the following is a graph of U versus T for one kilogram object two meters above the ground? Now, hold on a second. This actually, wait a minute. All right, so we got gravitational potential energy, U, resting h meters above the ground, t seconds after placement is U equals 9.8 times h for a, h is the meters of ground, resting two meters above the ground. So which of the following is a graph of U versus t, but where is t second? Hold on, let me think about this for a second. On Earth. t seconds after placement. So t, but there's no t variable, right? So, we plug in 2 for 9.8, and it's 18. It's 19.6, but where's the t? It's just a constant 19.6. 
So like, I actually think it's this flat line, which doesn't make sense because, wait, unless the potential energy, hold on, let me think about this for a second. Yeah, I guess. T seconds after play. It's just like, it's got a potential energy of 9.8 H joules. I don't see any T. So the, o like the only other thing it could be is this, right? Is where it starts at 19.6 and then it slowly drops down to zero, like as if it hit the ground. Um, the rest, of, so it's either B or C. But my issue is that there's nothing, there's no, um, there's no value for T. Hold on, so what's the finding is a graph of U versus T? It's got to be B. This doesn't make any sense. You know, the only thing is, the only thing we have is there is no T. I'm actually really confused. I mean, I almost want to say this is not, I, I just don't think this is a good question. But let's click the explanation and let's see the answer. All right, so it is this, but let's see why. Yeah, so it's just constant. I went too far because I, well, the way I was thinking about it was I was thinking it's like it starts at 19.8 and then it's, but it's going to fall, you know, and so it's eventually going to hit the ground. But actually, you know what? That's wrong because that's a false assumption. It could be 2.8 meters above the ground on a table and that's that. So there is no T value and yeah, that's, I mean, I just overthought it. You know, I'm thinking it has to be falling. All right, uh, next question. All right, the graph, the aligned graph at the left in the xy plane can be written as equation y equals m times this. Which of the following represents the graph of y equals mx? All right, so let me see. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me read that again. Let me written as the equation. Got it. Okay. Four. mx minus 2. Okay. So we need to figure out what the slope is here. So my slope is it's going negative 2 to the right 1. So it's a slope of negative 2. So the slope of y equals mx is y equals negative 2x. Right? So it's up 4 and then shift it to the right by 2. That's what this all this stuff is. So y equals negative 2x. So it should be going through the origin slope of negative 2, which is... This guy, to B. Oops. All right, cool. Next. Okay, the lined graph at the. Oh wait, hold on. Let's do this. Okay, the lined graph at the left in the xy plane can be written as the equation. This, which of the following represents the graph of y equals mx minus two minus two? Okay, so check this out. This, it's going to have the same slope, right? Clearly saying that. So all, let's make sure all of these have the same slope. Oops. So my slope here is, it looks like a, so ooh, that's really hard to see. Maybe down, there we go. It's down eight over three. It's like a negative, it's a slope of negative eight thirds, okay, roughly. And all of these guys look about that same. Now, here's the question. Where is the y-intercept, right? So what's happened, you know, what I can do is I could actually isolate all this stuff. I could, um, no, that's not going to help. So right now we've got over here, it's shifted to the right by three. That's what all this stuff is. It's shifted to the right by three and up by two, right? So to the right by three and up by two. And now the new one is shifted only to the right by two instead of being shifted up by two, which would put it here. It's shifted down by two. So it should cross this point of two, negative two. So you see how I did that? I was basically like, okay, I found this, this point here is in the crosshairs. And I said, it's a, you can see that this means a shift to the right by three. This means a shift up by two. And that puts, what I, otherwise it would be going through the origin, now it's going here. And then this is the equivalent of a shift to the right of only two, not three. And then a shift down of two, not up of two. So I negate the two up and then I drop it two. So it should be going through this point two, negative two. And now I can find the right answer. 
and it's got to be this one C because it's going through 2, negative 2. Hope that made sense. That one was a little difficult for me to explain. Okay, next, the line graph to the left in the xy plane can be written as y equals mx plus b. Okay, so I can actually write this equation. This would be y equals the slope looks like 1, 2, 3 over 2. Plus, and my y-intercept is negative 5, so actually minus 5. Okay. Where m and b are non-zero constants, which of the following represents the graph of x equals m, y, b. All right, so it would be x equals m, y, minus 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate y again. So I'm going to add 5, so it's x plus 5 equals 3 over 2y. Then I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 thirds. And I get 2 thirds x plus 10 thirds equals y. And in fact, let's just write the y on the other side. It's the same thing. So we're talking about a slope of 2 thirds. So it's got to go up to the right. And a, right, did I do that right? Hold on, let me just make sure. X, so I added five, and then yeah. So it's got to be a positive slope and a y-intercept of about three, a little above three. Up to, or this looks like it's probably it, because it's got the right y-intercept, and it's a positive slope. This is wrong. Up to, over three. No, this looks wrong too, because it's such a steep slope. This is almost a slope of like, Four. This is almost a slope of four. We want a slope of about, that's like four. We want a slope of two thirds, very different. And so this is probably it. Okay. All right. So that is it for the weekly live stream from Scalar Learning. Again, I'm going to figure out pretty soon when I'm going to do the live stream. Just got to make absolutely certain when the test scores from the college board will be out. And we'll go from there. Hope this was helpful. If you did enjoy it and find it useful, please click that like button. If you have any questions, Put them in the comments section. And I will see you guys next time. Best of luck in your SAT preparation. Take it easy.